in this lesson, we're going to be solving systems of nonlinear equations by graphing, solving systems of nonlinear equations algebraically, and approximating solutions of nonlinear systems and equations. The method for solving systems of linear equations can also be used to solve systems of nonlinear equations. A system of nonlinear equations is a system in which at least one of the equations is nonlinear. When a nonlinear system consists of a linear equation and a quadratic equation, the graphs can intersect in 0, 1, or 2 points. So the system can have 0, 1, or 2 solutions. So down here we see that the no solution case is if they don't intersect, the one solution case is if they intersect at one point, and then the two solutions case is if they intersect at two points. For example one, we're going to solve the system by graphing. So I have y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 1 and I have y equals x minus 3. Now you could go and graph this by hand, but if you have access to a graphing calculator, it's much easier. So I'm going to just plug these equations into Desmos. So my first equation is y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 1. So here's my parabola. And then my second equation is linear. It's y equals x minus 3. And if you see, they intersect at one point and Desmos is great because it just will automatically tell you the point that they intersect. And this is actually considered a tangential point. This line is tangent to this point, and you'll learn about that later in your math career. But for now, all we need to know is that this system of equation has one solution, and that is at the point negative 1, comma, negative 4. So if I go back here, the solution is negative 1, comma, negative 4. And now we're done with example 1. For example two, we're going to solve this system by using substitution. If you remember, substitution is just when we take one equation and plug it into the other equation. So I see that I have two isolated y variables. So I'm going to take this one and plug it in here. So I get negative 2x plus 3 equals x squared plus x minus 1. Okay. Now I'm going to add 2x and subtract 3 on both sides. And obviously I'm going to line them up. So I have 0 equals x squared plus 3x minus 4. All right, so we can solve this equation in all sorts of ways. We could complete the square. We could use the quadratic formula. But I noticed that this looks easily factorable. Okay, So my two numbers that I could factor this out into need to add up to 3 and multiply to negative 4. That's going to be positive 4 and negative 1. So I have 0 equals x plus 4 and x minus 1. And I can easily tell that my x values are going to be negative 4 and 1. I'm going to confirm this by using the quadratic formula and just showing you another way that we could solve this. So once I get here, this is standard form and it's set equal to 0. So I could use x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared, which is 9, minus 4 times 1 times negative 4, and then all over 2 because a is equal to 1 here. All right, well, this is going to be 9 and then minus negative 16. Minus a negative is plus. So this is going to be the square root of 25 plus or minus negative 3 and then all over 2. Okay, and then this is going to be 5. I'm just going to draw a little barrier. So I get negative 3 plus or minus 5 over 2. And that's my x value. And if we do this out, I can see that if I do negative 3 minus 5, that's negative 8. And then if I divide that by 2, that's negative 4, which is what we get. And if I do negative 3 plus 5, that's positive 2. And then divided by 2, that's 1. So I've solved this equation in multiple ways, and we get the same answer. So we know that we're right. Anyway, now we're done with this one. So for this example, we're going to be solving the system by using elimination. So sometimes using elimination can be advantageous when you're solving a system like this. And the reason here is I see that I have a y on both of these with the same coefficient. I see that I have a negative 3x for both of these. So what I can do is subtract this equation from this equation to cancel out both the y's and the negative 3x's. So I'm just going to line this up a little bit better. So I get y equals x squared minus 3x minus 2 and then y equals, there's no x squared term, so I'm not going to put anything under here. I'm just going to line up the x term, so negative 3x, and then minus 8. And I'm going to subtract these equations. I'm going to put parentheses around there. So y minus y is 0. x squared minus nothing is x squared. And then negative 3x minus negative 3x, that's going to cancel because this minus a negative turns to a plus. Negative 3x plus 3x cancels. And then I have negative 2 minus negative 8. Remember, minus a negative is a plus, so negative 2 plus 8 is going to be 6. So that's positive 6. Now, this equation is much easier to solve. 
I don't need to use any sort of factoring or quadratic formula. I can just solve by using square roots. Anyway, if I subtract 6 on both sides, I have x squared equals negative 6. And then if I try to take plus or minus the square root of both sides, I see that I'm taking the square root of a negative number. So I'm not going to have any real solutions here. So this is a no real solution case. So on a graph, if we graph these two equations, we would see that these would not intersect on a graph. Anyway, now we're done with this one. Approximating solutions. When you cannot find the exact solutions of a system of equations, you can analyze output values to approximate the solutions. So in example four, we're going to approximate the solutions of a system of equation to the nearest thousandth. So normally, if you have access to a graphing calculator, this would be super easy. All you'd do is plug in these two equations and then see where they intersect, and there you'd have your solutions. But if you don't have access to a graphing calculator, then you can sketch a graph of the two functions and then see where they intersect and then use that on your paper where they intersect and plug that into a scientific calculator to get your answer to the nearest thousandth. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to graph y equals 1 half x squared plus 3 first. And I see that my vertex is going to be the point 0 comma 3 because I don't have a b term here. So I know that 0 comma 3 is going to be my vertex. So I'm going to plot that right now. Okay, and I know that 0 is my axis of symmetry. So any point to the left of this is going to be the same output as the right to this, the same distance. So if I plug in 1, I get 1 squared is 1. 1 half of 1 is 1 half. So 3 plus 1 half is 3 and a half. So this is going to be right there. And if I plug in 2, I get 2 squared is 4. Half of that is 2 plus 3 is 5. Right here, right here. Now I don't have any... Uh, more room over here, that's fine. So now I'm going to plug in 3. So if I plug in 3, 3 squared is 9. Half of 9 is 4 and 1 half. And then plus 3 is going to be 7 and a half. So it's going to be right there. And that's all that we're going to be able to fit on this graph. So I'm going to sketch. So something like this, and I'll just do something like this for the other side of the parabola. A little bit messier over here. Anyway, now I'm going to sketch a graph of y equals 3 to the power of x. Now, I'm doing this all in my head, but you could easily make a table. Um, I'd actually recommend that just for time purposes of this video. I'm not making a table. Uh, I'll do this one in green. So y equals 3 to the power of x. Well, 3 to the power of 0 is going to be 1. It's going to be right here. And then I will do 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. So I will do that right around there and then 1 ninth, and so on. And then over here, 3 to the 1 is going to be 3. And then 3 to the second power is going to be 9. It's going to be right here. So now I'm going to sketch this graph, because that's obviously all that's going to fit here. And I can see right here that they are going to intersect. So this is in between 1 and 2, and it's much closer to 1. Now, the way I'm going to be able to do this on a scientific calculator is do a little bit of algebra with these equations. I'm going to plug this equation in here and then set 1 equal to 0. So if I have 3 to the x, this one, and plug it in here, that's going to equal 1 half x squared plus 3. I'm going to subtract 3 to the power of x on both sides. So I get 0 equals negative 3 to the power of x plus 1 half x squared plus 3. All right, so now there's going to be a little bit of guess and check going on. And we need this to the nearest thousandth. So I want to find the nearest thousandth that makes this true. So this is going to be 1 point something because it's a little bit after my 1. So I'm going to go to Desmo Scientific and try this out. So what I'm going to do here is just plug in 3 to the power of parentheses and then plus 1 half, and then do parentheses, squared, and then plus 3. Okay, now this is giving me an error, but all I have to do is plug in whatever x value I'm guessing to figure this out. And remember, I'm trying to get this as close to 0 as possible, because that is what we're trying to do. We're trying to make this equation true, and that's going to be to the nearest thousandth. So I'm going to try 1.1 and see where we're at. So 1.1 and 1.1. I see that I forgot to put the negative in front of the 3, so let's try that. All right, so that, that's close, 0 0.25, but that's obviously not as close as we're going to get. So I'm going to try 1.2 and see if we get closer. 
All right, so 1.2 is much closer, okay? But it's not 1,000. This is to the nearest tenth. So this would be the closest one to the nearest tenth. So I need something in between 1.1 and 1.2 that is going to be closer. So I'm going to try 1.19. That's going to be to a hundredth. All right, so now that is a positive value. When I had 1.2, that was a negative value. So I'm going to try, uh, let's say, 1.91. All right, that's a little closer. Now I'm going to try 1.92. That's even closer. So now I'll try 1.93. It's even closer. 1.94. And you can see how easy it is because I use the parentheses. It's easy to change. All right, so this is now giving me a number in scientific notation, which is even smaller. 1.7 times 10 to the negative fourth. So I'm going to try 1.95. All right, so now I get a negative number. So I know that I'm narrowing in on my correct answer because I have a negative number and a positive number. Okay? But if you see this, this is negative 0 0.002 something. Okay? So if I move the decimal three times here, this would be negative 2 times 10 to the third power. But if I go back here to 1.94, this is 1 point something to the negative fourth power. So this number is actually closer to zero than the other one when I plugged in 1.195. So my x value that's to the nearest thousandth without a graphing calculator is 1.194. So I'm going to go back here and write that x is approximately 1.194. So now that I have my x value, what I need to do is plug this back in. So I'm going to plug it into y equals 3 to the power of x. And you could have plugged it into y equals 1 half x squared plus 3, but I think this is going to be easier to plug in. So I'm going to plug in 1.194. So if we go back here, get a new line, 3 to the power of 1.194. And I get 3.712. And since we want it to the nearest thousandth, I'm going to go to the 6 right here and round up. So 3.713. So I'm going to go back here and write that down. Y, y is about 3.713. So my ordered pair would be 1.194 comma 3.713. So now I'm just going to check my answer on a graphing calculator to see if we're correct. So I go back here. I am going to type in y equals 1 half x squared plus 3, and then y equals 3 to the power of x. And I see that this answer is the exact answer that we got using the scientific calculator. So if you don't have access to a scientific calculator, then you still can figure out the approximation. But it was obviously much easier to just plug this into Desmos and see where the functions intersect to get our solution. Anyway, now we're done with this one. Recall from section 5.5 that you can use systems of equations to solve equations with variables on both sides. So if you look at this equation in example 5, it says solve negative 2 times 4 to the power of x plus 3 equals 0 0.5 x squared minus 2x. Now you've never learned how to solve an equation like this without a graph, and the process is very complicated. So it's easy to just approximate a solution by using a graph. So what you can do is write two functions. So I'm going to write y equals negative 2 times 4 to the power of x plus 3. And then I'm going to write y equals 0 0.5 x squared minus 2x. Okay, And the reason I did that is because this is one side of the equation, and then this is the other side of the equation. So I just set y equal to both sides. Okay, And then what I'm going to do is graph these in a graphing calculator and see what my solution is. So if I go back to Desmos, I can just plug these in. y equals negative 2 times 4 to the power of x plus 3. So that's one of my functions. And then I have y equals 0 0.5 x squared and then minus 2x. All right, and I see that I have two solutions here because it's intersecting twice. So this is one of my solutions, and that's the other one. Now, since there is no y in our initial equation back here, we only need the x value. So my first x value is just going to be negative 1. So I'm going to write x equals negative 1. And then my approximation of my second value is going to be 0 0.468. So x is about 0 0.468.
8. So these are my two solutions. Okay, now on Desmos, you can actually figure this out without putting the y. So if I just had these two functions, and I'd recommend graphing both the functions to see how they behave. But anyway, let's say you didn't want to do that. You could just set the equation into Desmos. So I'm just cutting this and then pasting it here and then saying equals. Right here, these are my two solutions. X is negative 1, and then this is X is about 0 0.468. So you can do it this way too, but once again, I always recommend actually graphing the functions and then seeing where they intersect to find your solutions. Anyway, now we're done with example five.